Good evening, future Wolverines. My name is Ms. Hayden, principal here at Wellington High School, and I am so excited that you would like to join our educational community. We have a legacy of brilliant, high-performing, community-engaged young people with integrity and a ton of personal character. I am so proud to serve as the principal of these incredible young people, and hopefully you will be a part of the Wolverine Pack. Now a little about our school. Our school hours are 7.30 to 2.50, very different from our middle school hours, so you will have to set your alarm, okay? We are a seven period day, so students here will go to seven classes per day. Each class is 50 minutes a piece, and we have about six minutes in between classes. We have two lunches, and they're approximately 40 minutes a piece, so work that out. Um, we have a full offering of athletics and activities. We have a full offering of AP, of AP and ACE courses for accelerated learning. And our student code of conduct is very simple. We follow the Wellington way, which are just basic rules of life and being of being a high school student. So our expectations are simple. Be responsible in words and deeds. Be ready to learn both mentally and physically and respectful of yourself and others. Our dress code is tasteful and contemporary. And that's all you really need to hear about the school at this point. I know you're here to listen about our academies. And so now I'd like to introduce to you our infamous academy coordinator, Mr. Eric Wilkinson. Thank you, Ms. Hayden. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining us tonight for this event. Um, we wish we could obviously be together, which we will be in the spring when we extend invitations to all of you who are coming to us next year. But we're excited for an, an evening of, of information, um, of context, and for student and teacher success stories. So um, I want to take a couple of minutes just off the top just to kind of lay out how this event will go. Um, I'm going to talk for a few minutes at the top of the program about the common questions that families have had over the years about this process, because I know this is new. Um, particularly if you've never had a child, you know, enter a high school, middle school, or elementary school academy. So I want to answer some of those up top. I want to address those, but I know as this program goes on that you will have questions. Um, we have a handful of folks who have volunteered tonight to be in the chat on YouTube um, for this YouTube Live who are going to help out. They'll identify themselves as the, the evening goes on to answer some questions. If you have a specific question about a program that you're going to hear about tonight, you're going to hear from all six. Um, please hang on to those questions until maybe you've had those teachers and students uh, presented to you and have a chance to impress you. So hang on to those questions. But if you have a question that is, is pressing and that you want to have an answer to, feel free to put those in the chat. Just understand that those of us on the live um, stream don't have access to the chat as we're going. But I will certainly come back at the very end um, and wrap up any lingering questions and some other um, pointing questions that come up. My email address is on that first slide. It's eric.wilkinson at palmbeachschools.org. Feel free to email me with questions that you have about the, the selection process, the, the lottery, or any of our programs, and if you want some materials. So, so we're going to move forward and start talking about the academic requirements for our academies here at Wellington High School. First and foremost, the Equine Pre-Veterinary Academy has higher standards and different prerequisites than our other programs. So in order to apply for our equine pre-veterinary program, you must have a 3.0 middle school GPA and you must currently be enrolled in Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 honors. What that means is if you are, you are classroom enrolled taking that course as we speak in eighth grade. However, we have one exception to that, which is if you are taking that class online because your middle school doesn't offer it or you were initially placed in pre-algebra, you can work toward that, that credit online. However, you must complete 50% of the coursework on FLVS or another virtual platform. You must complete 50% of that work by the application deadline of January 28th. This way, it's sort of fair for all parties because the students taking Algebra 1 right now will have finished one semester of work before their applications are submitted and evaluated. And it's only fair that our, our um, virtual or non-traditional learners are doing the same, okay? The other programs are Marketing Academy, Fine Arts, Fire Science, and both of our in-house academies only require a 2.5 GPA overall. 
there is no other requirement. There are no other materials that we collect. There, you know, letters of recommendation, uh, you know, uh, certificates from awards you won in the seventh grade. You don't have to submit those. It's not quite the same as a college application. Okay. The submission process for verifying grades, however, is a little different depending on your circumstances. If you are currently enrolled in a Palm Beach County School District public school, your report cards will automatically upload in our application system from SIS, which you're all familiar with. If you're attending a private school, charter school, or virtual school, it is possible and sometimes likely that we will, would not have access to your students' grades. So there is a place on the application for you to input or upload those grades. And those are due as soon as possible after your second nine weeks ends. You know, fortunately with the school calendar being a little more normal this year, most of us will have access to that way in advance of the January deadline. You can also upload items later if you've already submitted an application. So don't be concerned. There's plenty of time between now and January 28th to get that done. So for the out of boundary students, I wanna talk in a little bit of detail um, about this because these are the common questions that after doing this job for six years and teaching in a choice program for six years before that, I know these are the questions that come up the most. First off, the district is going to award us a number of seats, a seat allocation for the 2022-2023 school year in February. We do not know how many seats we have. We do our best to estimate. We do our best to provide information about previous histories, previous allocations that are in the choice booklet, but there is no guarantee year to year of how many seats we have as a school to welcome out of boundary students. We, we like to have as many as we can because we feel as though the diversity of thought, background, and knowledge that we get from all of our choice students only enhances the intellectual climate at Wellington High School. Once we receive that allocation in February, Ms. Hayden, myself, and the faculty members of the academies will meet, and we will then allocate seats based on, say there was 100 seats, just as a, a, a example, we would break those 100 seats down into our four choice programs. In previous years, we've had anywhere from 10 to 50 seats per academy. But again, as I referenced earlier, there's no guarantees of how many we'll get year to year. The lottery process itself, however, we want to be very upfront about. The reason you apply in January or by January 28, 2022, is so that coordinators like myself at schools all around Palm Beach County have a chance to review those applications for accuracy, to double check any missing grades or information that needs to be perfected, so that as many students are eligible as possible to go into the lottery. That lottery will be held in March, 2022. All eligible qualified students will go into that lottery and we will sort those applications by grade level and by the first and second choice on your application. Results to be released in early April or late March of 2022. So if you wanna apply and you say like, well, how do I do that? The applications are open now. They open November 1st. You're welcome to apply tonight at mypbchoiceapp.com slash apply. The deadline to submit all of your materials, that's your application, your address verification, any uploads of, of transcripts or FLDS records and report cards is Friday, January 28th, 2022. So this next topic, again, is something that is a common question. People ask every year and they ask in abundance. I get a lot of emails, and a lot of phone calls about this. So I just wanna be upfront and transparent, you know, for all parents, all students. Though the lottery process is done by computer and it is genuinely random in the way that they pick names, there are some built-in preferences for certain groups. For instance, if you're, a, if you're a parent and you have a current Wellington High School student, meaning someone already enrolled in the ninth, 10th or 11th grade for this school year, your student entering ninth grade or whatever other year you're, you're applying for would get a preference for any seats that we make available. We also provide preference to children of WHS teachers. There's also since just a there's also a veterans exception. There's some other there's some other built in ones. But the biggest one that's a source of mystery among the general public that we always try to do a good, good job of explaining is the principal's top 20 percent list. Every school has the ability to note or, or dedicate 20% of their seats and allot them to candidates who meet certain criteria. Schools can choose to use that list or not. Principals can choose to use that list or not. Here's how we do it at Wellington. We take all of the candidates for all of the programs from out of boundary first choice students. We 
we stack rank them literally on a spreadsheet by their GPA in eighth grade, the GPA that we use for, for eighth grade and seventh grade. We then stack rank by the highest math course that you've taken. And then we use the corresponding grade in that highest math class. So for instance, for the last several years, the average student who would be placed on our principal's top 20% list for our choice program out of boundary seats would be students with a 4.0 GPA who are taking geometry honors in eighth grade and above. So that is the standard. Now, again, year to year, our, the number of applicants change, the makeup of our demographics and, and, um, and backgrounds and report cards of our applicants change. So each year can be different, but just to give you the most transparent, honest, open explanation possible, that is how we determine who goes on that list. And not everyone who is chosen for that list ends up accepting a seat. So that doesn't mean that 20% of our seats necessarily go to kids who have been have been previously selected okay so what are the expectations once you join wellington once you become a wellington wolverine as Ms. hayden re referenced earlier we expect that you're going to get a 3.0 or higher on average in your choice program courses whether that's in-house or choice we also expect that you have at least a 2.0 overall gpa that's at minimum we expect conduct grades of four or three in all courses. And we also expect full participation, this will be part of your academy contract, in the co-curricular activities that are part of your chosen program. So for instance, the Equine Pre-Veterinary Academy has volunteer contact hours that they serve at animal hospitals or veterinary offices that are required as part of your contract. The Marketing Academy is affiliated with a group called DECA. And there is a minimum number of DECA points that you have to earn for each semester and each year. So again, when you receive your invitation, if and when you receive an invitation to join the choice programs, when results are released in early April of 2022, you will receive electronic notification from the district. Then you will get an email from me with your academy contract, your acceptance form, and a Google sheet that you'll have to fill out to accept the terms of those contracts. Now, transportation is a common question. We don't have all the answers because for the last couple of years, it's been a little different. Um, most students who use the bus stops now have to register um, or have been registering for the last couple of years at the Palm Beach County School District website. We expect that to be no different going into next year. So if you'd like to register for a bus once you get notified of your choice status for next year, you, you will follow the process that is distributed by the school district. We at Wellington High School do not pick bus stops. We do not assign bus routes. So the transportation department works all summer long and releases those records very, very close to when school starts in August. So we don't have a lot, you, you can look now to see where our choice transportation zone is. You can look to see where the boundaries are that we use, that we can reach out to. Um, but just because, just because you're accepted to a choice program, does not necessarily mean, and we cannot guarantee that you'll be able to walk to the closest corner or walk to the front of a subdivision or neighborhood and find a bus stop that'll go directly to Wellington. So, so please be mindful of that. We will communicate more about that um, once the acceptance letters go out in April. So the last, the last kind of big couple of big topics that I wanna talk about before we get into the academies themselves and you're gonna hear from them shortly are some questions that I want you to ask with your son or daughter as you look at these applications and as you evaluate Wellington, all right? First and foremost, every year I ask this question is, have you had a genuine family conversation with your student about that student's academic goals and aspirations? The biggest difference between students who show up in August every year on this campus, excited to learn, excited to collaborate, and excited to be part of these outstanding programs and learn from these exceptional teachers is whether or not they had a say and they have buy-in to coming to Wellington for that specific program. The only students that show up in my office or you know are knocking down my door week one, week two, week three of school, really confused, really concerned, and really desperate to get out of the program that they were selected for are the students who were not part of the process. So I can only say as an educator for 12 years who has worked with hundreds, if not thousands of families during these processes, please have that conversation so that whether it's your, your strong urge that your student goes to Wellington for a specific program, 
If they're not on board, please make sure that we're doing the right thing for them and for the school. Then based on what you know about our school, what you, the homework that you've done, a lot of you have already checked out our showcase materials, emailed me, a lot of you have already submitted applications. That's fantastic. Based upon what you've already learned and what you learned tonight from the teachers and students you'll hear from, is Wellington High School the right fit for your student? Is this the fit they're looking for? We are a comprehensive high school. We have great days, we have bad days, like any comprehensive high school. So if the expectation, uh, the sort of question three, if the expectation is that you're gonna get a private school experience, we are a public high school. If your expectations are that, you know, we will not check in on you and not monitor your progress, that's also not accurate because we do monitor, we make sure the kids are successful. Our teachers come to me within weeks, sometimes days of the opening of school, you know, expressing concern and also in praise of students who have really activated in the classroom. And they certainly have, have reached out if they're concerned that we have a student that's just, you know, not, it has nothing to do with being in the right place as to be in the right program. You know, we have an embarrassment of riches in Palm Beach County with high schools that can fulfill the needs of a lot of students. You know, Wellington is certainly one of them. We think it's the best, but we're biased, right? So what are your expectations for our faculty, our staff, and the student body here? You know, if you can, if you have those clear expectations, you know, we can work together and have a very successful career for your student here for four years. So before we get into the, the, the presentations themselves, I want to direct you to some sources of information that you can find common questions answered, you can find school information, you can look at our school calendar, you can find out everything that's going on on our campus. The first is our official school webpage, which is welh.palmbeachschools.org. And if you're more of a social media person, and nowadays who's not, we have official uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages that all have the same handles. So if you search at Wellington, HSFL on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you will find a growing number of students, parents, community members, and partners who follow the day-to-day -day goings on at this school through those portals. We're excited to offer them. We're excited to update it. Um, we have student faculty success stories posted on there. We have you know, dates and deadlines for testing. We have exciting announcements about upcoming performing arts performances like uh, that you'll hear about later tonight from our drama department. We have uh, the art shows, the, you know, the sporting events. We, we sort of cover the whole gamut. So please, if you haven't already, and since these notifications go to my phone, please blow up my phone by clicking on our Twitter account, our Instagram, and our Facebook account by searching at Wellington HSFL. Okay? So let's get started with our formal program tonight. And the first group you're going to hear from, and I'm very proud to introduce, are from our Equine Pre-Veterinary Academy. One of our lead instructors, Ms. Melissa Barbarigos, along with two outstanding students, Rachel Feather and Matthew Carmona. Take it away, guys. Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to class of 26. I'd like to welcome you potentially to our Wolverine Pack and talk a little bit about the ideal candidate for our pre-veterinary academy. Um, as you might have noticed, when Mr. Wilkinson was speaking, he said that the requirements to get into our pre-veterinary academy are a little bit higher than some of the others. Um, and that has a lot to do with the ideal pre-vet applicant as well. Um, right off the bat, of course, you would say that this student would be interested in animals, but it definitely goes beyond that because a lot of what the students do in our program is tied to rigorous science coursework. And that really is the basis for what a lot of the students do. So they would need to have an interest in animals, um, an interest in the medical field, and a very strong interest in science as a collective with an emphasis in the life sciences, um, along with a strong math background. You also notice that part of the requirements are having Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 honors. And that is, is also related to that because usually math um, and math coursework is also um, integrated and related to science coursework. And that's a little bit of an indication for us as well. Um, in addition to that, an ideal candidate would be a very hard worker, very dedicated, and very interested just in the material. Um, that's what I found, and probably across the academies in general, is that all the students that are the most successful in our academy are those that are genuinely interested in pre-vet medicine, 
They want to be there and yeah. learn. And there's a variety of things, some of which we haven't had access to in the last two years because of COVID. But slowly, you know, they're kind of kind of coming back. And so we're able to do a little bit more uh, slowly, slowly. So hopefully we continue along that path and can continue to give a variety of different opportunities to, um, to our students. So I'm not going to get into that aspect because I have two amazing students with me here. So Rachel's going to talk a little bit about um, some of the coursework itself, and what students learn um, and what she has learned and or enjoyed. And then Matthew is a senior and he's going to talk a little bit about our volunteer requirements and also about the senior internship requirement as well. So Rachel, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Rachel Feather, and I'm a junior, and I'm in the Equine Pre Veterinary Academy. So, as Ms. Fabrico stated, this academy is a very science based program. So, starting off with freshman year, you're going to be in biology and equine science. Uh, equine science definitely is one of my favorite classes. Um, it's an introduction to animal anatomy, and you learn about what a healthy animal looks like in both of these classes. And you'll see this is a theme throughout all these classes is that they do go beyond textbook work. They're very lab-based classes, very hands-on. Um, sophomore year, you're going to be um, enrolled in anatomy and chemistry. So another part of this academy is that you do get exposure to many types of sciences. Um, and like, and like um, I said earlier, this class is very, both these classes are very hands-on, whether you're doing dissections in anatomy or experimenting with different compounds in chemistry. And um, junior year, uh, you're going to be enrolled in an ACE or AP science class of your choice. Uh, here at Wellington High School, there are many options from marine biology to environmental. Um, currently, I'm in AP biology and I am doing it and I am enjoying it very much. It's super interesting. Um, another class that you're going to be taking is biology to honors. Now, this um, veterinary science, you learn everything from bacterial, fungal, viral infections to first aid to biosecurity, all the systems in, a, um, in the body and everywhere in between. And um, your senior year, keeping on with the theme of uh, exposing to many different aspects of science, you're going to be taking uh, physics. And you're also going to be doing a vet internship exploring uh, veterinary science in your community. So I'm going to pass it on to Matthew Carmona so he can explain more about the vet internship. Hello, um, my name is Matthew Carmona. I'm a senior for our uh, veterinary program. So on top of the curriculum that, that, that you have to take, you will also be required to do contact hours. So these contact hours essentially are that you go out of school on your own time you go and volunteer at these certain areas. So they include, uh, but, but are not limited to animal care, animal rescue, uh, equine facilities. Essentially, as long as you're working with animals, it, it'll count. But things like writing and food donations won't, like they, they won't count for contact hours. So you are required every single year to do a minimum of 10 contact hours each semester. So for your freshman, junior, and sophomore year, you'll have to do 10 each semester for 20 a year. But in your freshman, er, er, sorry, in your senior year, you will, re, will be required to take an internship class. So for this internship class, you will have to go and sort of do an intern at a, uh, at a veterinary clinic where you essentially shadow and like learn the and pick up the trade of like being, of being a vet. Right. You see what they do and you and you write reports on it. So the good thing about this internship and even the contact hours themselves is that you are not limited to just dogs and cats. If you want to work with um, horses, you can do that. If you want to work with turtles, sure. If you want to work with parrots, go ahead. If you can find it, go ahead. So you aren't. it's not limited to just certain aspects. It's the great, the good thing is that anything animals is fair game. So, so uh, a little side note for the internships and the uh, contact hours is that you have to go find them yourself, right? The school will not provide them for you. We will give you like recommendations on where to go, but it is up to you to go reach out and to go do it yourself. Thank you guys. 
Um, and so just to kind of follow up on some of those, we do provide information and contacts in terms of, you know, who they can reach out to. And then we just have some contacts within the community. If you do live near Wellington, because if you're an out of bounds student, that might not be the case. Um, but in all instances, there's there have been ample amounts of veterinarians that are willi willing to help. And in terms of the internship, it is a lot of what the kids make of it. You know, so there are some students that they entered the internship and they've been volunteering in the same location for the previous three years. And by the time they get to the internship, they're you know assisting with surgery potentially. But if they haven't established those relationships, then that might be the very first time that they're shadowing, and then they're not going to have um, an experience that's going to be, you know, amazing. So it really is a lot, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying initially. It goes back to what are the students putting in? You know, how self motivated are they? How interested are they? And with so many things in life, what you put in is what you get out. And that definitely sums up um, and and explains um, a student that's really successful in the pre vet uh, program here at Wellington High School. So if that's you, that sounds like you, and you are interested in animals and in sciences, then we would love to have you here at Wellington High School. Thank you guys very much. Um, and the main thing that Ms. Rodriguez just mentioned that's so important is the authenticity you heard from two outstanding students i'd be remiss as the bowling coach here at wellington to not mention that rachel is a two-time district champion and state qualifier and a one-time county champ in her three years so far so looking forward to another big year with her next year but um the equine program is serious and it's animal science is based and it's rigorous um and and there's truth in advertising if all of the things you just heard were not true we we wouldn't have kids have such success within it right so outstanding instruction wonderfully dedicated kids and a, and a track record of success that goes back as the original academy at Wellington High School. And we're very proud to have Ms. Varvarigos, Ms. Breyer, and all of the teachers as part of it. Certainly proud of Matthew and Rachel for making the time tonight. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. See you next year. Um, next up, uh, we had, and, and we mentioned earlier, kind of the, the what do you do part, the what will you learn and what will you do part. Well, a lot of our fine arts students are very busy pursuing their passions outside of the classroom and outside of the school day, um, as is Ms. Simmers. So we had a chance to get together with Ms. Simmers, our dance instructor, and she had a cross section of students available to her during the school day, um, including students from all five disciplines that we offer here, a dance student, a choir student, a band student, a theater student, and a visual arts student. Um, to get together and share some things. So they were able to, to pre-record this, be happy to answer your questions about that as well as the night goes on. But this, I just wanted to tell you, this was pre-recorded. You get a chance to check this out right now. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Summers, Fine Arts Academy Chair and Director of Dance. Description of a strong candidate for the Fine Arts Academy is a dedicated, passionate, motivated, hardworking student who has an interest in the art area that they decide to major in, in which five out of the eight fine performing arts classes are in either dance, band, chorus, photography, theater, or the visual arts. Students will need to meet challenges and new processes with an open mind and a growth-minded perspective. Anything can be learned and mastered with real effort and a true desire to accomplish a task. He or she will need to be available during the evenings and weekends for after school rehearsals and performances, be actively involved in fine performing arts clubs, and be willing to go above and beyond to hone their skills. Being actively involved in clubs, organizations, and extracurricular activities requires time after school and during lunch. A Fine Arts Academy student is a contributing member and is involved to do what is needed to make any project a, a success. Now, I will have a student from each of the art areas speak about what you will learn and what, will you, what you will do within the Fine Arts Academy. If you decide to join the band program at Wellington High, you will learn either how to play an instrument or how to get better at the instrument you already play. 
through that, you will gain knowledge about music and you can use that knowledge to um, quickly learn all these new pieces you will be learning in class. In marching band, you will learn how to march and how to play while marching. When you first join the band, you'll be entered into band camp. This first week is exclusively freshmen so that our leadership team can teach all the newbies all the fundamentals of marching. After the whole band is together and our show has been learned, we will go to MPA, Marching Performance Assessment, and thanks to the new talents we'll be adding, we'll get superiors for sure. After marching season has come to a close, we will move on to concert season. This we will practice every day in class, and then when your friends and family come to see you play, you will sure to wow them. Parents, I hope you have a lot of faith in your children and the band, and I also hope you have thick walls. Hi, my name is Jordana Levin, and I'm representing the chorus program. Here at Wellington, we have five different choirs of all different levels. All freshmen will begin in the beginner level choirs, which have no audition, but are totally welcome to audition for higher level choirs. We have three treble voice choirs, one bass, and one mix. Anyone can sing. Chorus is very accommodating, and you fit right in and make friends super, super fast. Our choirs are very successful. For the last few years, almost all of our choirs have received superiors, which are the highest awards at our district MPA, our music performance assessment, and two have gone to the state level and received high awards as well. In a non-COVID year, we go on a lot of trips. Most are optional, but are super fun. We go to Disney, to New York, Chicago, Washington, DC, and lots of other places around Florida. We sing a lot of repertoire and have multiple concerts a year. And overall, of course, is really fun. You become super close with the people you meet there. And me personally, I met some of my best friends through chorus. Yeah. Hi, my name is Katherine Pollitz, and I'll be speaking about our award-winning theater department and what's done for me. Just over this weekend, we received 11 superior medals for our work in the District 10 Best Bean Festival. Wellington High students won this top honor in categories including monologues, playwriting, duet musical, solo musical, pantomime, and costume design. Just as that just today, we received word that we required rights to perform the musical Mamma Mia this March. Our shows this year include Shakespeare's final play, The Tempest, a big hit for us in the fall, and the romantic comedy Almost Named this February. We do so much in this program, playwriting, Shakespeare, big musicals, an annual trip to New York when we are in a pandemic. We started Ace Drama last year and our pass rate was 89%. For me personally, I wanted to be in theater because I figured out that doing this gave me an emotional outlet, confidence, public speaking skills, and helped me learn professionalism. Taking ACE Theater um, has helped me learn about theater at a higher level. Everything we do is at a higher level here. Our stagecraft students build sets and learn about lights and sounds while running for them for our events in our Broadway caliber, caliber state-of-the-art theater. Hi, my name is Hayden Pontius, and I'll be representing the dance department. The dance department here, we have many different classes, including um, dance tech one through four, which we work on ballet, tap, jazz, modern hip hop, and even African dance. That class is not audition based. Then we have a ballet one through four, levels one through four class, and that is audition based. We focus on ballet and modern, and we do a lot of choreography projects there. And then the last audition based class is dance rep, which is dance company. And we focus on choreography, and we do a lot of contemporary work. We have, for company, you have to have a lot of dedication because there's a lot of after-school rehearsals and we get to perform in many different places. We go to Bach Middle School of the Arts and perform with other dance departments around the county. And we also have an audition-based group go to Florida Dance Performance Assessment in Tampa every year. Last time we went, we got straight superiors, which is the same as them, where it's the highest um, score we can get. Um, we also are involved in company. We have National Honor Society for Dance Arts here you can get into if you're super involved. Um, you can get inducted into that. Um, we have three shows a year. We have the fall concert, the student concert, and the company concert. So you will have many chances to perform. Um, all of our classes are offered some complimentary Miami City Ballet tickets at the Kravitz Center each year. And this dance program is really amazing. And I hope you guys join me because it's given me just a place to express myself. Hi, my name is Ali Scott, and I'm going to be talking about our visual arts classes that we offer here at Wellington. First, I'll talk about our 2D art classes. In 2D Art 1, students will be introduced to the building blocks of art, including the different media techniques, principles, and elements that you can use to create a piece of art. In 2D Art 3 Honors, which comes after 2D Art 1, students will further develop their technical art skills as well as develop their own perspectives and voices. Artwork in this class can be created based from life, photographs, and especially the imagination. In AP Art and Design and Portfolio, students will continue to develop their own voices and skills in their own body of work and submit their work to Cambridge, sorry, not Cambridge, to um, College Board to 
see how well their art scores. After school activities for 2D art include Art Club and National Art Honor Society, where students work collaboratively to bring the visual arts to the attention of the school community and beyond. Next, I'll be talking about our photography classes here at Blankton. Our classes here include Photo 1, Photo 2, and ACE Digital Media and Design, including AS and A-level classes. These courses include certifications in Adobe editing software like Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Each of these classes work to expand the student's knowledge of photography history and the function of cameras, video filming techniques, and compositional design rules that will allow them to develop their photography skills. In ACE Digital Media and Design, students will put together skills learned from Photo 1 and Photo 2, and they will develop their own body of work based on a specific theme. After school activities for photography include the London Photography Club, which I'm the president of, and I think you should join, um, which strives to capture school events through strong composition and to promote creative perspectives to share with the world. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to you being part of Wellington High School's Fine Arts Academy. Thank you so much to Ms. Simmers and those, uh, those very talented students. Um, in, a, in a subtle plug for our social media accounts, if you want to see the work of all of our art students for, from the performing arts side, the visual arts side, they are a very, very popular topic. They are a very popular post subject on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. So if you if you want to check those out, you'll see some of the amazing work that those students had, had produced. Um, and they, they earn superior ratings and high marks and medals and ribbons you know, all over, all over the district, all over the state and nationally as well. So we're very, very proud of our fine arts students. So um, transitioning on to our Fire Science Academy, um, once again, in an in a effort to showcase how the career and college preparedness we want for our students also applies to our instructors. Uh, Mr. Lee Webster, who's our lead fire instructor and has been for several years, um, he is a registered and, and certified firefighter. And tonight, he is taking the, the final part of a new certification test for himself. So um, he's unable to join us live, but he, he did record something that we're gonna show you in a moment. After that, you're gonna hear live comments from one of our juniors, who's a leader in his class, in his company, uh, Mr. Robert Brown. So enjoy this. Good evening, my name is Lee Webster. I'm the lead instructor of the Wellington High School Fire Academy. Uh, the ideal candidate for this program is somebody who's self-motivated, uh, willing to listen, um, can adhere to a paramilitary atmosphere, um, understanding the chain of command, um, listening to instructions, and overall motivated to work hard. Mm -hmm. What you will learn in our program, uh, freshman year, you will learn uh, anatomy and physiology with a heavy emphasis on emergency medical services. So we'll go in all to, in, through the all the different body systems, such as the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. Uh, your second year, which is your sophomore year, you'll go into firefighting one, uh, which goes into uh, lecturing on hoses, appliances, ladders, ropes and knots, and everything you learn within the lectures, you will apply outside on our practical days, such as tying the ropes and knots, attaching the appliances, putting up the ladders, climbing the ladders, forcing through doors. Um, your junior year, we build upon what you've learned in your sophomore year. Uh, things are heavier, um, we use a bigger ladder, uh, longer ropes, um, force harder doors, uh, and flow water. And then your senior year, um, you are going to a limited access portion, which is over at the college where you work on um, the skills at Palm Beach State College, which is our partner. And you'll work with flowing hose. And eventually, once you graduate, you will, if chosen, or if you would like, go into the fire two portion where you will work on the live fire portion where you'll actually be fighting fire and becoming a state of Florida firefighter. All right, appreciate that. So that's our that was a pre-recorded comments earlier from Mr. Webster, who is who is advancing you know his certifications tonight in order to teach even more um, to the candidates who come into the fire academy every year. So um, as he mentioned, those ideal candidates are are folks who want to continue to serve and have an interest in serving. A lot of them have family connections to you know fire service. Others are if it's just a passion project for them to be an EMT or a firefighter down the road. So. So that leads us to Mr. Robert Brown, one of our juniors. And, and Robert, you go ahead and take it away with, and talk about your experiences with the FIRE program, sir. 
So in the Wellington High School Fire Program, um, this program is going to be teaching you, like Instructor Webster said, to become a uh, firefighter, EMT, paramedic, if you do want to pursue that career after high school. Um, you're going to be learning how to uh, roll hose, get your gear on in time, tie knots, and, and then you will be learning also the medical portion of it. So uh, basics to trauma, uh, just how the body functions, and basically how to start to fix problems with those. So um, it's, it's a truly great program, and you're going to be doing it's, – it's a lot of hard work physically, um, but it's also a mental aspect of it because not only do you have to be physically strong, but you also need to be mentally strong in order to do some of these tasks. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a physically demanding program, but in the end, it is very, very rewarding. And yeah. Robert, if I could put you on the spot, can you talk a little bit about the relationships, the camaraderie, kind of the enjoyment that you got out of it? Because I've, I've seen you in the classroom, I've seen you around campus, you guys dressing your dress blue uniforms on Mondays. Can you talk about how much that's meant to you over the course of your time at Wellington? It's, it's meant the world to me. I've made so many close friends from this program. And when you're working together on the field, you really see who your true friends are. And, you know, you get to know, you, you get to know each other so much better by seeing how we work, how we, how we flow together. And it's just, it's, it's such a tight knit group that, you know, you don't even know, you go from one day, not even knowing these people exist to two weeks later, these people are people that you trust with your life, you know, because in this career field, you need to be able to trust somebody that you're going into a fire with, you know, that they're going to have your back if, if need be. And it's, you, you get really, really close with a lot of the people in your class. And it's, it's truly great. I appreciate you sharing that. And, and before we let Robert go, and I, I just wanted to mention this about the environment and the structure and the, the culture of the fire science program, the, the most distinctive classroom on our campus is the fire room. You walk in and, and there's gear on the wall and they're, you know, they are ready to go. You helium tanks and boots and, you know, we've, we've painted and there's there's class gifts that they the different groups that have graduated have gifted back to not only the instructors, but also, you know, gifts that have benefited the school. When you go outside and you see it in a handful of these photos, but it's really just scratching the surface. So for those of you who apply and those of you who get the opportunity to join this program next year, we will bring you together in April, um, either April or early May, to campus for a live in-person orientation where Robert, his colleagues, Instructor Webster, and the kids in the Fire Academy, the cadets, I'm sorry, in the Fire Academy, will get a chance to really orient you about what it's all about. And they are, it's immersive, it's a source of passion and pride. And since our first graduating class in 2013, we are very, very proud to have, you know, more than a dozen active duty firefighters and EMTs on um, on that list. We also have nurses and folks who have gone into the, the medical field, the health sciences field. So it's a, it's been a wide ranging success. It's not just a cool thing to have. It's been an amazing thing for kids to be able to do. And so so, Robert, I salute you, um, Instructor Webster and all the folks in the fire program. And we hope we get a chance with some of the folks watching tonight. Those of us who, who get a chance to maybe watch this archive video later. Um, get a chance to apply and join this outstanding program. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for lending your experiences and, and I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, I'm sure. See you tomorrow. All right, outstanding young man. Um, our, our last choice program that we're gonna talk about tonight and then we'll, we'll hear from our two in-house programs. Our last uh, choice program is our marketing academy. Um, it's it's uh, near and dear to me. I, I taught for six years in this program before I took the, the role I'm in now, um, and we have two outstanding teachers, um, both with, with experience and passion and heart that they dedicate to the program each year, um, Ms. Elizabeth Newsom and Zachary Baker. And we have three outstanding students with us tonight. Um, it was Kira Bergman, Raina Dimkowski, and Lexi O'Halloran, um, who are going to share some of those experiences with us. So take it away. Hi, and good evening. I just want to take an opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I am Elizabeth Newsom. I am a marketing academy teacher here at Wellington High School. I um, also am a DECA advisor and um, I'm the vocational chair for the vocational department here at Wellington. Um, maybe just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been at Wellington for six years. 
Um, and I um, am not a teacher by trade. I uh, worked in private industry for many years and actually um, was acquainted with the DECA program and the Marketing Academy at Wellington through my children going through the program um, when Mr. Wilkinson was a teacher. And uh, I, it didn't take me very long to realize that something very, very special was happening at Wellington with the Marketing Academy. And through volunteering and helping out, um, I was able to be exposed to some of the most amazing young adults I had ever seen. And I was, of course, just thrilled that my children were part of the program, but also was just energized by it and really um, felt as though I wanted to get more involved. And the stars aligned and um, I uh, was presented with an opportunity to teach and become part of it. And, and so the story goes. So, uh, so again, celebrating my sixth year here and uh, couldn't be happier. Uh, love going to work every day and love working with the best students um, at Wellington. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, who is the ideal candidate for the Marketing Academy here at Wellington High School. Um, if you are curious about business, if you are curious about how the world works, um, if you are energetic and a, um, an energetic learner, if you love collaboration and collaborating with your peers and um, investigating, researching, and trying to find out about the world around you, then the Marketing Academy is for you. Uh, you have the opportunity to work with um, the same students um, for a, a continuous period of time, you know, for four years that you're all in the academy together. And that enables you to build some great relationships um, and also to really have an opportunity to learn from each other. Um, so if what I'm describing sounds from interesting to you, then, then this is the place for you. Um, so you're going to have an opportunity to uh, meet some of those students tonight that are currently in the program. But before that, I'd like to um, introduce my partner in crime, Mr. Zachary Baker, who, uh, who uh, along with me, are running the Academy and, and the DECA program. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Baker. Hello, I'm Mr. Baker, the other marketing teacher and DECA advisor at Wellington High School. And a little bit about me, a little personal introduction. This is my seventh year teaching, but it's my first year at Wellington High School. My previous six years, I was at John Overton High School in Nashville, Tennessee, where I served as the DECA advisor and marketing teacher there. But since I've been at Wellington, I have been impressed with the students in the Marketing Academy. Their commitment to academic excellence and dedication to personal growth is unparalleled. The students and faculty in the marketing program at Wellington High School have created a positive culture where students strive for success and aim to give back to the community. In the Marketing Academy, both professional and personal development opportunities are endless. If you have an interest, if you have an interest in a career in social media, hospitality, advertising, travel, tourism, sales, finance, accounting, any of that, then the Marketing Academy could be right for you. Now, I'm sure you didn't tune in tonight to just hear me and Mrs. Newsom talk. You're, you're going to meet some of the stars of our program. You're going to hear from a senior, Kira Bergman, junior, Lexi O'Halloran, and sophomore, Raina Demkowski. Kira. Hi, my name is Kira Bergman, and I'm a senior in the Marketing Academy, and I have had the honor of serving on the DECA Leadership Board for the past two years. This board is a diverse group of our Academy members who plan programs, competitive events, and campaigns in order to improve our Academy and help our members succeed. However, in general, throughout your four years within our academies, you will not just be participating in the classes taught by Mrs. Newsom and Mr. Baker, but you'll actually be taking those marketing textbook concepts and applying them to real world scenarios and businesses you see and use each and every day. These lessons and scenarios will help you develop public speaking skills and learn how to professionally present yourself and how to market yourself successfully. Also, the connection you will build with your peers during these years will help you learn how to effectively collaborate with others. In addition, marketing allows for students to have an outlet for their creativity. Whether you want to design social media logos, posts online, or create your own business, starting new products and services for different markets, we provide you with the tools and knowledge you need. Overall, we believe in building a bench of strength through our leadership classes and mentorship opportunities allowing our upperclassmen, which are our juniors and seniors, to guide our new members of our program and assuring their success. 
Now I'll pass it on to my friend and fellow board member, Lexi. Hi everyone, I'm Lexi O'Halloran and I'm a junior. You should know that we not only learn a lot here, but we do a lot. But don't get overwhelmed by this. You can be a part of the marketing program and still be involved in plenty of the other activities that Wellington High School has to offer. I went to Wellington Landings Middle School, which some of you may go to, and I was nervous that I might not have enough time being in the marketing program and doing all of the other activities that I had known that I wanted to participate in. But DECA isn't all consuming. It isn't your sole identity when you are here. It is merely a great addition, an extension of yourself that you have here with all of the other activities that you have available to you at Wellington High School. And it's one that really builds you and your character. I have been able to be fully invested in DECA competition, as well as a varsity athlete and a National Honor Society member and part of the ACE program all during my three years of high school here. You can enjoy plenty of other experiences while being in this program and benefiting from all of it. So don't let this fear that it could consume your life worry you away from the program. DECA also gives you a great opportunity to make new friends and compete. Everybody can find something here that they're interested in, whether in competition you find you're interested in entrepreneurship, hospitality, marketing, or finance. Overall, being a part of this program has enriched my high school experience personally, and what we do here has taught me so many necessary life lessons. Next, you'll be hearing from my fellow DECA board member and friend, Raina. Hi, my name is Raina Dimkowski. I'm a sophomore in the Marketing Academy, and this is my first year on the DECA board. What I love about this academy is the family culture and how peers really support one another. Last year, I spent my entire freshman year of high school at home, yet I came back to school this year feeling welcomed and supported by my teachers and friends I made virtually with DECA. I know for a lot of us virtual learners, last year was a challenge to stay motivated, but with this academy, I felt excited to log on to school and I look forward to coming back to in-person school this year. Being back in person, I've seen and experienced firsthand the unique opportunities that this academy presents. Marketing students have the opportunity to take skills learned in the classroom in order to plan and execute community events, such as our student-ran trunk or treat projects involving giving back to local organizations, including Feeding South Florida and Big Dog Ranch. Watching students' competition projects ideas come to life through these events not only inspires me to work my hardest, but also excites the hundreds of other students within our Marketing Academy. I look forward to meeting some of you next year. Thanks so much, Raina and Kira and, and Lexi. Thanks so much for sharing your perspective with the group. And thank you, Mr. Baker. Um, I think it's pretty evident that we all really enjoy um, school on a daily basis. We enjoy what we do. We enjoy uh, watching our students develop and grow. And we hope that if this academy is right for you, that you're going to apply. And hopefully, uh, we'll see you on campus next year. Thanks so much. Thank you to the entire Marketing Academy team um, led by Mrs. Newsom and Mr. Baker and uh, students, we appreciate you. Uh, listen, just out of fairness, I, I mentioned Rachel earlier. I have to point out, um, Kira is our kind of school-wide communications and social media intern this year working with me on a lot of the social media that you see on the accounts that, that are online. And really, if you see a post that is not very exciting, but maybe well-written, maybe that's mine. Uh, anything with sizzle and sparkle and coolness, that's all Kira. So uh, we appreciate everybody for, for checking those out. So thank you to the marketing team. We appreciate you. Um, before we move on to our next uh, academy and the, the last two that you'll hear about tonight, I just want to give a one note of clarification and just for our, our viewing audience and also for the folks listening um, later on to the archive recording. These last two programs may not appear on your application when you go to apply to join Wellington High School. That is because our IT cybersecurity program and our drafting and communications design academy, both of those are what we call in-house programs. That means they are only offered to and only students can apply to it from feeder schools where the students are geographically zoned to be part of the program. So for instance, if you're at Wellington Landings or Polo Park, which are our feeder schools in general, but you're there on a choice, you know, in a choice program, but your physical address falls outside of the geographic zone for Wellington, you will not see the IT cybersecurity or drafting and communications design 
options when you go to the Palm Beach County School website to apply. So just, just please note that. And that also means if you're listening in tonight and you've, you've sort of had your questions answered or you don't want to hang around to ask a question later, this would also be a time when you can sign off um, and, and we, we sort of bid you a, a, a fond farewell for the evening. But certainly stay tuned if you'd like to ask a question or um, respond to anything that's in the chat. So, so with that, I want to transition to our IT Cybersecurity Academy. This is our newest program at Wellington, um, and it was, it was uh, established really to make sure that all of our, st our students who live within the Wellington zone have a high level college driven, you know, accelerated program in the IT sector um, that competes with those offered by other schools, you know, like Suncoast, like Palm Beach Central, like other surrounding schools that have really stepped up their game. And it's a competitive environment. Um, the cybersecurity world, as you're about to hear, is very, very hot in the career sector. It's very, very hot from a, a post-secondary education standpoint. And so we couldn't think of a better way to add to our existing academies than to, to bring in a professional with a, a teaching and industry background that would, would suit this. And so we looked far and wide and we took our time, but um, Principal Hayden and our team selected an outstanding teacher. And you're gonna hear from him tonight, Mr. Iwan Ross. And you're also gonna hear from one of our outstanding students, Mr. Cole Sutton who is our marketing academy and also because he's zoned for Wellington is also um, participating in our cybersecurity program. They are strong representatives of what this program is all about. I'm excited for you to hear from them. So Mr. Ross, take it away. Hello, good evening. Um, I am Iwin Ross. I am the cybersecurity teacher at Wellington High School. Today I'm here to discuss the ideal cyber candidate. The ideal cyber applicant or candidate for the cybersecurity program at Wellington High School is a student who is well, a great digital citizen, citizen with a passion for technology and cyber safety. The candidate should be creative and should value innovation, as well as we're looking for quick thinking individuals with the ability to solve critical problems and think ahead to protect potential issues as it relates to computing and networking whether it's personal or it's in a business environment. The ideal candidate is one who, who has exceptional time management skills and is willing to adapt to different environments and work situations. So if you are self-motivated and you value teamwork, you enjoy working with others, the Wellington Cybersecurity Academy would be a great fit for you. One of our students, our cyber students, Cole, will tell you more about what you will learn and some of the things that you do in the cybersecurity program as the program goes along. Cole, go ahead. Hi, my name is Cole Sutton. I am a junior at Wellington High School and I've been enrolled in the cybersecurity program since freshman year. Over the years, I, along with many others, have learned the fundamentals of computer, com computer networks and the security aspects behind them. This includes, but is not limited to, the most recent security vulnerabilities and threats such as ransomware or so social engineering, methods to protect and maintain those vulnerabilities, procedures about predicting and outsmarting cyber attackers, overall problem solving skills, and much, much more. Next, I will inform you about what you will do throughout Wellington's cybersecurity program. So during your enrollment to the cybersecurity program, you will be tasked with and accomplishing many different things. This includes, but is not limited to, tasks like certification exams, which can widen your recognition in the industry, like the Microsoft Network Networking Fundamentals exam. You will also perform many hand-on labs, hands-on labs that will simulate real life attacks. You will also potentially attend different cybersecurity conferences, such as the annual national initiative for a cybersecurity education conference and much, much more. All this information and knowledge I have gained throughout the past few years, few years has truly allowed for me to go be above and beyond the cybersecurity field. I hope to see you all next year. Thank you both Mr. Ross and Nicole for um, an outstanding summation of what the program is intended to do. Competition is fierce in these fields for jobs and we wanna prepare your students for the college and career options that are available um, through cybersecurity and, and network fundamentals. So thank you both for joining us tonight and thank you for making the time to, to speak to our audience. Appreciate Thank you guys. You. I appreciate it. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, I got to get one of those gaming headsets like Cole's got. It's cool. Sounds great. Um, last but certainly not least, I want to I want to brag on these folks before I turn the the uh, microphone over to them. 
is from our Drafting and Communications Academy. And this is a program that has existed um, for, for many years at, at Wellington. And it drives the bus as far as our certifications, our industry certifications, professional certificates, career preparedness is not just a buzzword for politicians. It's really not. It is the like lifeblood of education on the career and technical education side for many, many years. And that is that is for those of you listening at home, you might remember and, and have examples from your past of, of folks you went to school with who took a vocational track focused on a, on a career path that took them into a huge income opportunity and, and amazing creative jobs um, because they, they knew what they wanted to do at an early age. And so the, the biggest source of industry certification awards at Wellington High School has been from the two teachers, the two programs you're about to hear from. First, you're going to hear um, Ms. Sally Mark, who teaches our communications technology classes, and also Mr. Greg Smith, who took over our technical design, almost like our civil engineering program. So, and Ms. Mark's got some students with her in the class, Hannah Hartke and Alice Trota. So I want to turn things over at them, but thank you again for, for joining us tonight and, and take it away. <laughs> Hi, good evening. I'm Ms. Mark, and this is my communications. And this is two of my students came from the night. Um, it's, it's a, one, one of the questions we're asking is who is the ideal candidate? And, and that, that is somebody that has an interest in graphics. And even if you don't have a strong interest in graphics, students have found that they have a hidden talent. And the ones that do like graphics end up being, have lear learned even more in the subject. And we do concentrate in Photoshop and Illustrator. My program has four levels and you are to take each level one through four in order. And when you get to level three, that is production. And then level four are the managers. And these are two of my managers and they've been in the program for four years. And now I'm introducing Alice and Hannah and they're gonna tell you, they're gonna combine what you will learn and what you will do in this class. Uh, I'm Hannah Markey. I'm a senior at Wellington High School. I am one of the managers, as she said. I'm going to be talking about the first two years you will have in this class. Uh, year one is ComTech 1, which pretty much students will learn and to use the program Adobe Photoshop. And throughout the year, you're going to be learning different skills and practices in order to take the industry exam at the end of the year. And throughout the year, the opportunity to produce your artwork on different things, different items, such as like mugs, shirts, keychains. Um, and then after that, once you go and finish a complete full year, you're going to go into Comtech 2, which students will move out of Photoshop and start learning Illustrator. And that also has an industry exam, which you'll learn and practice throughout the year in order to take and then you'll move on to year two. And towards the end of the year, you're starting to get more <clears throat> to what you'll do the next year and start learning more about that. And by the end of the time you graduate, a lot of the times you have, uh, you have the chance to earn up to at least two industry certifications to have on your resume when you go to college. Uh, hi, my name is Alice Trotta. Uh, I'm a senior and one of the managers here in this class. So, picking up from level two, you're going to go to level three, and level three is uh, production. So, students design their artwork and uh, they do printing jobs, uh, which are mostly like t shirts. Um, the printing jobs come from inside the school and outside the school. So, other schools like Sun Little Ridge or like Pool of Art. Uh, order t-shirts and other businesses as well. Um, and some students make their own designs and sell their work. And I know other people who uh, work for a print company. Like my oldest brother, um, he got a job at the end of life. And um, he went on to follow kind of that career path. And then he's now doing an internship for advertising. So he designs um, advertisements and like logos for a company in Mohan who has offices like all around the world. So you can apply everything that you learn in this class outside um, in the professional's world. And students will understand the value of being a dedicated worker and learn how to work together. After three years, you know 
everyone in the class, and you really do form bonds with them, and you become a team. So you know everyone's strengths and weaknesses, and that just facilitates um, like all the jobs that you're going to do. Um, finally, you reach level four, where the students become the managers, and they oversee the level threes. Um, it's really important to say that you can't just like skip from level to level. You have to complete every single level to reach uh, level four. Um, so the managers, um, they, they oversee the, uh, the level threes and they make sure jobs are completed correctly and they solve any problems or conflicts that may arise um, within the jobs. Um, they also make uh, great bonds with the level threes and all the managers know each other from all the previous years so the whole class like at this point becomes like a, a really big team and kind of like a second family so it's really fun and you get really great opportunities inside the school and out and you learn a lot of things so, yeah well thanks ladies i appreciate you i can stop in the camera Appreciate you, Kelly, tonight and helping with the program. And we hope to see you guys sign up for the course next year. And next will be Mr. Smith with the drafting. Perfect. Well, welcome, everyone, to the tech design program. This is our computer-aided design program at Wellington High School. If you've got the perseverance to have made it this far in the presentation, then you've got the perseverance to do computer-aided design. Believe me, you, you do great. Um, so CAD is for anyone who wants to use a computer to design something whether it's engineering, architecture, game design, movie design, building characters in movies and so on, that's all done on computer-aided design software. And when I talk about computer-aided design software, we're talking about 20, 30, 40 different types of software. It's all used to drive different types of design uh, skill sets and so on. So we use Autodesk software. That's their promo reel running in the background. They're one of the largest and most popular producers of CAD based software. They've been around the longest for on the PC based. Um, we focus on three types of software in our program. The first is AutoCAD itself, which is for 2D drawings. It's the foundation of all CAD computer aided design. It teaches you the basic skills to use almost any type of CAD software. Um, it drives our laser printer in class where we can print things and print plaques and gifts and so on. We also we also then teach Inventor for 3D modeling, whether you're modeling car parts or Lego men. And we, that drives two of our 3D printers we have in class. We can actually produce products after we design them on the computer. And then finally, we teach Revit, which is a 3D architectural building design and management software. Um, this is the same software they use to build a one world trade center to replace uh, nine, after 9-11. So th this is huge industry-based software that real architects are using. So we're teaching you the true certification, certified-based software. Um, and what you get out of this is we're gonna help you get your certified user certificate from Autodesk for all three, for AutoCAD, Inventor, and Revit. So it's a, generally a three-year program, help you end up with three different certifications, all that you take with you when you leave high school. So that's our program. I'd love to see you in it. We, we got the largest computer lab on campus, so we need to fill it with lots of good students. Awesome. Well, thank you um, to Mrs. Mark, to Mr. Smith, and to two students who are in the ComTech room. Um, I think what you see, and it's a common refrain in a lot of programs, but especially in those two classrooms, this, this program is not, these, these academies are not about what you have to do, it's what you get to do. And there are so many creative things that happen all over campus, but if you get a chance to, as, as I have many times being in and out of those rooms and seeing the activation and the, the engagement that those students have when they're working, you know, hands-on with a 3D printer, hands-on with a screen printing machine, you know, creating items that are literally gonna be worn around campus, creating, you know, design pieces that are gonna be used for, you know, for video game technology, home plans, you know, it, I mean, CAD kind of runs the world now in civil engineering, so. Um, exciting things along the way, more to come. Um, and we, we hope that some of you who are living in the, the geographic zone of Wellington High School choose to focus on this as you go through. So thank you to all of you for, for being part of tonight's presentation. We appreciate you. Great job. Thank you guys so much. Um, so so in kind of to wrap things up and before we get into our questions and answers, I think what you heard as a common refrain, theme, mission over and over was that high school is hard. 
and the transition to high school can be difficult, whether you're, you know, a 13, 14 year old now looking at this presentation in eighth grade, or whether you're, you know, you're 44 like me, or, you know, some of your parents age watching out there who has been through this transition and knows how difficult it is to forge the positive relationships among teachers and students, and then from students to build friendships and bonds and collaborative groups that, that make high school rewarding. And so all of our programs have that track and have that purpose and have those pathways available to your students. And so I want to I want to be able to answer the the questions that you have in the in the chat and also some others that might come up. But again, if you are if you have something that is very very specific to your student that you don't want to share in a public forum, we totally understand. Please direct your emails to eric.wilkinson at palmbeachschools.org. Couple of things before I get into the chat questions. One common question is about ESE. Did you if I have a student with a 504 or an IEP, is that a part of the application process? Do you have to provide that information? Absolutely not. The lottery process is separate and distinct from anything regarding student accommodations, 504s, IEPs, or anything um, that your student needs. We have a full support staff and team available um, to support all of our students. We have students um, in the ESE students in each of our programs participating fully, having great success, graduating with career certificates, industry cert certifications, DECA honors, you know, equine internships, it runs the gamut, right? So that is, there's no restrictions, limitations, or even consideration of that. So just if you have an ESE student, and that's a common question, I understand it. There's there's nothing, nothing uh, that you would, would stop you or nothing special you have to give us in the application process. Um, in the chat, one person mentioned, my student and I are excited for the possibility of joining the Wellington family. Could you share the average number of applicants and are they notified of a decision? This is a great question um, that also came up very early when someone asked, how do I know if my son in this case, my student is gonna be in the program? So we have between seven and 800 applications each year for the last five years, uh, just to give you an average. Uh, that includes both in-house and out of boundary students. Depending on the number of seats that we have available, and we do have both in-house and out-of-boundary seats, um, we have, you know, we have a significant number for each program that we've normally been able to take care of. However, to answer the second part of your question, those 750 to 800 students who apply will all receive a notification via electronic mail from the district um, saying on the date that the lottery results are released, which is usually on a Friday afternoon, Friday uh, evening at the end of March or the beginning of April, that you will get notified in electronically whether or not your student was awarded a seat through the lottery or whether your student is on the wait list. And if you're in the wait pool, what we call it, that means that we, we cannot offer any additional seats at this time. However, if a seat becomes open, um, the district will send over names um, to me and we'll reach out to you to notify you if a seat has become available. So we're, we're very excited about that. We, we work diligently. Um, our job is not over on the last day of school. I work through the summer, Ms. Hayden and I collaborate and we work with the, the uh, guidance counselors and, and principals of the middle schools that feed us um, to help identify more candidates if we have openings. Um, but we do our best to fill every classroom and to make sure as many kids have the chance to be part of these outstanding programs as possible. So um, if there's any other questions in the, in, so there you go, Frankie Klein. Um, if the student is just passing with a C in the elective classes, but have an A on both science and algebra, would that affect her chances? Not at all. So, so again, the minimum standards, the minimum grade point average is a 3.0 overall. So that's unweighted. So we don't have honors or AP and, and ACE like we do in high school, but an unweighted GPA of 3.0 or higher for our equine pre-veterinary academy. The other programs only require a 2.5 overall GPA. And what we use is the second half of seventh grade and the early grades from, from eighth grade. So we, we obviously have to make a decision at some point We've, the district has chosen to phase out sixth grade marks because you know, it's not an accurate representation of who your student is or what their aptitude is in their first year of middle school. So um, all of that is explained also on the CHOICE website where we have our um, career and CHOICE schools uh, procedures manual. And any of those of you who would wanna see that, please email me and I'll send you a copy. It's no problem. So um, thank you very much for the kind words, Ms. Fine. Uh, Ms. Carroll, how many seats are typically available per program? That's uh, that's the that's the tough part about this. It is strictly a lottery, so we don't have auditions. So, for instance, if there's any confusion, and I understand how it comes up, this Friday is the application deadline. If you want to apply to a performing arts school that incorporates auditions, it's West Boca 
and uh, and and Dreyfus and I believe uh, West Boca, Dreyfus and forgive me, Boynton Beach. Those three schools for the high schools. We are not part of that cycle. So all of the applicants and all of the applications for our programs are due Friday, January 28th, 2022. So that's that's a clear path. We, so we just can't tell you exactly how many seats we're going to have. However, we typically have two to three classes of marketing each year, two classes of equine pre-veterinary, um, you know, one to two classes of our fire academy, and then fine arts sort of spreads out because there's so many disciplines, as you heard earlier, we don't have a dedicated ninth grade class of fine arts academy kids because they can take, you know, the visual arts and any of the four performing arts specialties. So they're, they're spread around, so they're not in the same place. So but we do, we do have a substantial number and depending on the year, some of those seats may be more in-house versus choice, just depending on what the district gives us. So it's a great question. And again, if you've got questions in the chat, feel free to feel free to text those in. Um, my email address is everywhere across our you know our social media as well, but our district website, our school website. If you need to contact me, we're happy to to answer those. Um, one last thing I want to leave with, if there's no other questions before um, we conclude, is about the ACE program. Um, we have a very very active, very huge ACE program on our campus, meaning our kids at Wellington take Cambridge courses through the ACE diploma program through Cambridge University. Um, that enables us to have almost you know, 240 or so seniors every year graduate with what you call the ACE Diploma. And the ACE Diploma enables you to earn the Bright Future Scholarship without having to, to earn the minimum test scores or GPA. Um, they're required otherwise for non-ACE Diploma students. Um, and, there's, and there's more to that. And we've, we've got an excellent coordinator named Mirka Drucker who can provide you more context on that. We'll certainly have her as part of our orientation event. Um, and I can connect you to her if you have questions. So from the ACE side, we have, you know, more than half of our campus takes ACE courses all the time, um, you know, each year. We, in fact, our beginner English class, English general papers is basically our standalone um, class for most of our freshmen to take. And that's a college level, college credit based course. What I want to share with you just before we conclude tonight is all of the academies you heard about tonight have class requirements, whether it's the eight classes required for the equine program or the five for marketing or um, you know the five for the fire academy and so on all of those programs have room in the schedules that they demand for your student to have plenty of time in their schedule to complete an ace diploma so in other words you're not making a decision if you're an in-house candidate and you're coming to Wellington High School and you're concerned, well, if I start the marketing program or if I start the fire program, my, my child won't be able to complete both. And it's simply not true. We have ACE diploma graduates, even as a proportion of those academies in greater numbers than our student population, because they are meeting and exceeding the goals of a program, managing their time, you know, getting their study habits in order and staying disciplined. So, so the ACE diploma is something that goes along with and is part of the graduation process for many of our, our academy students, as well as their career paths or their, their career interest or academic focuses. Just want to mention that so that Ms. Drucker didn't uh, get upset with me for not mentioning it later. So a um, couple more questions in the chat before we sign, sign off. Um, Ms. Caraballo, does distance matter to get accepted? Not at all. Uh, we don't, that's not a factor. The geography does not matter in terms of the application process. What I can tell you is that if, if you asked me what usually happens if a student turns down a seat, it goes back to a little of that family conversation, which is how long do you want to spend driving each morning to you know, go to the school that you're applying for? Um, and we do have in the first couple of weeks of school, usually someone who says, boy, my mom has to drive, you know, 40 minutes and, you know, each way. And we're not sure if this is going to work. And, you know, that's all, all part of the equation. Um, you know, buses are nice and bus transportation is excellent. And we, we reach out as far as, as we possibly can. Um, but it, we don't go to every street corner with a bus and we don't go to every you know, neighborhood in Palm Beach County. So sometimes the driving element is more of a challenge than the courses, but it's certainly not a part of the application where we're blind to all those things. So um, then a couple other, a couple other great questions on the first choice, second choice question. The way the lottery works and the way that candidates are evaluated is based on they sort the first choices first. We fill our seats starting with ninth grade students first uh, because they have the greatest chance of filling seats, you know, and, and completing the program over four years, those seats are filled first with first choice applicants. So just a hypothetical, I'm just using a number that says nothing to do with any of the programs that we have this year necessarily. But say I had 50 seats for a program 
and I had 60 first choice applicants from out of boundary students, for instance, those for 50 of those 60 students will receive an invitation to join the program. And we would not be able to accommodate second choice students. However, if I had 40 seats available and only 25 students elected as their first choice for a particular choice academy, then 15 seats would go to second choice candidates. Now, in general, you'd be asking Mr. Wilkinson what, what usually happens. We usually have more, more applicants than we have seats. And we usually have more first choice candidates than we have spaces available for the last five or six years. That's my experience, just being transparent. However, in the course of the application process, the notification process, and the decisions made by those families who are extended seats, we certainly have had occasions where second choice candidates were able to join one of our programs because a number of first choice candidates who had to decline seats for whatever reasons, hopefully family conversations and geographic considerations, or they just want to go to their home school with their friends. I mean, it's, it's high school. All of those factors go into it. So we have, we have been able to accommodate second choice candidates for our choice programs um, and certainly for our in-house programs as well. Though you'll notice on the applications, um, our in-house programs are not available as second choices because we, we can usually accommodate and work with students who have a last minute interest to get into our, our IT cybersecurity or our drafting and communications program. We can, we can be a little more flexible sometimes with those classes because we don't get as many applicants because the candidate pool is not as large. The number of students who are zoned to go here is a lot smaller than the, the number of, of students who don't go to the, in the Wellington zone. So, um, so we, we probably get two to three times as many applicants for our programs from outside our boundary as we do inside the boundary, if that makes sense. So, um, so I hope that answered the, the questions that um, Ms. Carabello and Ms. Klein asked. Um, dual enrollment and Ms. Prisbolitz, um, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, dual enrollment courses are offered for, for classes that we don't offer at Wellington. Um, and we usually begin that process in 11th grade. The best thing about Wellington High School, and I'm an alumni, I didn't mention that earlier because I was, we were, you know, wanted to keep the program <laughs> tidy. Um, but I'm a proud alumni of Wellington. I graduated in 1995. And one of the great benefits of this campus has always been first class instruction. World class teachers with outstanding lesson plans, experience dealing with kids of all skill levels. And we work and coach and mentor and encourage and help all the time. And so it, it would be a shame if we have an excellent teacher available to teach a class and having the same student say, well, I want to go and take that at Palm Beach State College at you know five o'clock in the afternoon to get another college credit. We have literally dozens of ACE classes available. We have 15 AP classes and stay tuned, more to come on all those things. Um, we have one of the more expansive you know, post-secondary course offerings in all of Palm Beach County. We, we hope and we encourage our students to take advantage of those outstanding teachers first. And then certainly if there's, you know, we, we have issues like with a language where you know, someone wants to take a, an advanced, you know, uh, a, a Mandarin, Chinese, Japanese, Latin, of course, you know, it's foreign languages that we don't teach on campus. Uh, but but usually our, our dual enrollment options are limited to 11th and 12th grade when someone is trying to fill out a schedule and simply can't find that course on our course catalog. Okay. Um, great question also on the, the ACE program from Ms. Carroll about whether or not it starts in ninth grade, and it, and it does. The, the standard, the ACE diploma at program is designed to be completed over three school years, so to speak. I think the, the technical part is within 25 months, you have to pass seven ACE courses and seven ACE exams. And so those can be completed between the end of your freshman year and the end of your junior year. And that's where the vast majority of our, of our ACE diploma candidates earn their diploma. Some do it between sophomore and senior year, uh, having kind of come later to it. And we certainly welcome and, and appreciate those kids as well. So that's how we come up with our, you know, our number over 200 to 250 um, ACE diplomas each year. But we do encourage students who are willing to take that, that chance and work with their counselors, work with Ms. Drucker, myself, anyone else that you're working with in the school to fashion a schedule. We encourage that. And we also have ACE and AP courses in all of our academies, um, you know, except for the FIRE program, which is essentially like a dual enrollment. But we have even explored maybe doing that on the medical side down the road. So, um, so college courses available, college offerings available in each program. But, but most of our ACE diploma candidates do begin in the ninth grade. Excellent, excellent question. 
Then Ms. Klein, it, will we, we have an open house before this new school year? So we have sort of two answers to that. One is yes, we will have a, a standard in-person, you know, traditional uh, open house in August of 2022 to welcome all students to campus. But for this specific group, those who I'm talking to tonight and who will see this video as it, as it lives on YouTube forever, um, we will have a live orientation for all incoming academy students um, in late April or, or early May of 2022, so that you can one, see the campus, two, meet your teachers and go to the classrooms. And then third, we'll have some elective teachers available to, um, to help make your, your elective options clear. So our debate coach, our journalism teacher, you know, some other specialists around campus who you know, want that last spot on your schedule that you may have um, beyond your freshman requirements and your academy courses. Um, so you'll you'll see some familiar faces, uh, and and if you like I said, if you mentioned, look at the social media, you'll see some of those those programs represented. But um, it's a competitive marketplace. You know, our teachers want your students, and they want them in the classes because they know that that the students who attend Wellington are you know are world class in 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 talent, but also motivated. They have parents who are motivated, and they want to have you know a, a, a huge resume of academic and extracurricular accomplishments to present to colleges in the future. So. Um, I hope that answers that question. So we'll, we'll hopefully see you a couple times before this is all said and done. So, um, so this seems like a natural. We're, we've been going for uh, you know for a little bit here. So I want to I want to end the presentation with this and, and thank you for your time and effort um, and and certainly your patience in in joining us for tonight's event um, and watching this later on if you if you see the archive the recording. Um, I am always available to you. Um, it's Eric Wilkinson at PalmBeachSchools.org. Um, I will be on, just as a personal note, I'll be on a, a personal leave um, starting next week until the middle of January, unrelated to school, um, but I will be back in time for the the, uh, um, the end of the application period. We'll, we'll also leave an out-of-office reply message on my email that gives the application website, the due dates, the deadlines, an archived video of this, so it will link to this so in case people have questions. So please encourage, if you have neighbors, friends, and colleagues, you know, your your uh, your children's friends who might have been interested in Wellington but didn't really know where to find information. This is an excellent template. The program materials that I send out, the program flyers that are on our showcase site, I'll have a, a detailed link of that and you're welcome to email me for those at any time. So um, appreciate everyone joining us tonight. I appreciate Principal Hayden, all the teachers and students. Um, Coach H, want to give a shout out. He's the producer behind the scenes tonight, making sure everybody came in and out of the screen correctly. He is a dynamo and a wizard behind the computer. So I want to thank him and, uh, and thank all of you for taking the time on a, on a, a busy evening in, in the holiday season to, uh, to check out the options at Wellington High School. And we certainly hope that you will, uh, you will embrace the opportunity to be a Wolverine and we hope to see you down the road. Thank you very, very much. We'll see you soon. Thank you.